thanks to the supporters of channel member Rob Pontin. I absolutely agree. We have multiple points to prove today. Borussia Dortmund Champions League quarter final. We uh we can get some revenge for them knocking us out of the Europa League in that first year in Europe. That'd be nice. They absolutely outclassed us that day, as I'm sure you remember. Plus, of course, Bozic went there last summer. It'd be nice to show him. Grass isn't always greener on the other side. And the way both them and Bayern Munich have been arrogantly pursuing Cordoba for a year and not offering anywhere near his value. It would be, I would feel very vindicated with a win over Dortmund. No, I'm a little bit worried they're just going to beat us again as well. Hello and welcome to part 75 of the Greek Odyssey. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have both legs of our Champions League quarterfinal against Borussia Dortmund. Since you were last with me, um, we have officially won the league. A um, couple more games played. Um, as you can see, two more victories. We have started rotating the squad as well, as, no as noted by Leonidas Benatos scoring a goal for us. Um, he's now played four games for us this season. And you know what? He's all right, isn't he? Four games, one goal, one assist, one man of the match, averaging a 7.35. His, uh, his star rating would suggest he's not any good, but I think he's probably a player who we need to get out there in the shop window for the rest of this season, then sell on with a view to him getting into the Greek national team. He's never going to get past Cordoba and Dominguez and uh, Duffy and get into our midfield regularly, but it is nice to see that some of these fringe players who aren't close to good enough for us as a competitive Champions League team are still more than good enough to dominate domestically where there you go we are what's that 28 points clear with seven games still to go I think we're probably going to set a record this year we are going to be massively rotating in the league I doubt I'll feel the need to show you any more league games if we get knocked out of Europe today the only other thing we'll potentially see is a Greek Cup final because we did where are we now I've added the real name fix to for the Chivas series because people asked for it. Um, it's added it to all my saves and I can't find the Greek Cup anymore because it's now called the Caipelo Elados, which I guess means Greek Cup in Greece, maybe. Um, but we're 2-1 up from the first leg, again, with a rotated side. We played Acosta out on the wing in that game. So we're looking good. Squad depth is certainly good enough for domestic football, allowing us to play our best players in the Champions League and keep them fit to do it. So hopefully... That might even serve as a bit of an advantage for us. So this is the team that we are sending to Germany for the first leg. And we are going with the balance mentality again, which we've started to use in these bigger Champions League games. We'll probably go positive in the second leg if we need a goal. If not, we'll just keep being balanced. We did it in both legs against Juventus and it worked very nicely. So Osman in goal, a back four of Kansarovic, Michaelis, Lawson and Kalapitas. Kalapitas having to play because of a suspension to Felipao, who, by the way, has now made his Brazil debut. To give you some context of how good these Brazilian wonder kids that we've got knocking around the place are, although I guess Felipao's maybe a little bit old to be a wonder kid. But this isn't just a journeyman Brazilian who's heading to Greece and will never get anywhere. He's 22 years old and has now played for the Brazil national team. So very bright future ahead for Felipao, um, although not as part of this game today. Milo at the base of the midfield, then Duffy and Cordoba ahead of him. Cordoba, of course, who has been chased by Dortmund for over a year, although they don't currently want him. But I imagine that's going to change as soon as we hit the summer. Oh, I'm sorry, Siri. That's not nice, apparently. I apologise, Dortmund. Um, and then Sanchez and Lencina out wide and Carnavali up front. And I know Carnavali is not wanted by... Quite a few Italian clubs, Romy, Juventus, Lazio, Napoli, Torino, um, and also Getafe as well, who, of course, Spanish, I think. Not Italian. Show, show your knowledge, Kev. Um, hey, they're Spanish. Kev's a genius. Don't know what that was with my hand, but he is 20 years old, Italian, wonder kid. Don't know why Inter let him go, but he's proven that he's a, uh, he's a top, top player as well. And I imagine Juventus will probably be leading the charge to take him back to Italy this summer, and they'll be disappointed. So let's jump into the game. Um, I hope Bozic is playing for Dortmund because it would be nice to see him and nice to know that he's uh, he's walked straight into their side. In fact, there he is playing in an attacking role for them as well. We spent the last two years playing him as our holding midfielder. He's gone in there and they're playing him as a number 10 with a number eight on his shirt. But it's, it's nice to see the... Uh, the flexibility that that man has. I don't know where they fit Cordoba into their team if they're playing Bozic out of position already. Um, 
Right, go out there, pick up where you left off in the last game. It's a very different circumstance to how we played Dortmund last time because we go into this game, I don't know that we're going into it thinking that we might be equals with Dortmund now, but I would suggest we're not a million miles away from them. We've certainly got plenty of history of doing well against Bundesliga clubs in the intervening period since we last played Dortmund. So it's not a foregone conclusion that Dortmund make it through to this semi-final. And it's uh, it's a weird situation for us to be in. We're still in completely uncharted territory, going deep in the Champions League for the first time in our history, going deep in the Champions League as a Greek club as well, which is relatively unusual. Milo with the corner. If we can grab a goal here, it's crazy town. Um, it falls to Cordoba. He plays it across to Lencina. He's got space and does open the scoring. An 18th goal of the season for Jorge Lencina, who's been injured for about the last month. He missed out on both legs of the Juventus game and uh, has now popped up back in the team today. Still not fully fit, but showing just how good he is with a wonderful finish from the edge of the area. Cordoba instrumental as part of that as well. And why you would leave Lencina unmarked on the edge of the area with his goal scoring record. I do not know. I imagine he's one Bozic didn't warn Dortmund about because obviously he wasn't here before. Um, it shows how much we've moved on in their, what, 14 months since Bozic left that I look at this team we've got now and I don't think Bozic gets in the, it gets in our starting eleven because he wouldn't get him ahead of Milo at the defensive midfield. He wasn't getting past Cordoba and Duffy in central midfield. So I think Bozic probably starts from the bench for us if he's still with us in this game. Although obviously without selling Bozic, we don't have the catalyst of the big money transfers and all that kind of stuff. So we maybe don't have Milo. We maybe don't have Lencina. But it is it is interesting to think that we could make an argument that we have a stronger first eleven than Dortmund do. Although obviously this is where we are a lot weaker. Um, now Cordoba's picked up a knock. I look down at that bench for a central midfielder and there isn't really one. Really? Uh I mean, Papanagis Papanagis can play there, but I don't really want to play him in this game. I'd probably push Milo further forward. I'm going to leave Cordoba on for now. And Dominguez is injured at the moment, which isn't ideal, because um, Dominguez would be the first option to come on there usually. But he's uh, he picked up a knock. I think Dominguez is out for the rest of the season, if I remember. I can't actually remember what his injury is, but I know it was a, a pretty big one. So we'll check in on him after this game and see if maybe he can be fit for the second leg if Cordoba's not going to be. Otherwise, we're going to have to look to the likes of Pepe or Guras, neither of which are on the bench today. I think they're both in our Champions League squad. Well, I've got a feeling Pepe might not be, but I think we've talked about that before. I thought he wasn't, and then it turned out he was. So who knows? The important thing is we're 1-0 up at halftime, away against Dortmund. Let's guard against complacency. We're going to keep an eye on Cordoba at the moment. He's our captain. He's... 79% condition still. He's fine to still be on the pitch at the moment. We need him for his leadership. We need him to put him in the shop window for Dortmund because as part of our conveyor belt of players, we kind of want Cordoba to go in that big money move this summer because Sanchez is getting sent off because we've got Dominguez ready to come in and take his place. But going down to 10 men is not ideal. And I feel like that's the second time this season we've seen Sanchez do that. No, it must have been someone else. Let's not judge Sanchez too harshly then. Um, right. Well, why is the game not paused? <sighs> what do we do here? The obvious thing is take off Cordoba as part of it, but I mean, I think I just leave leave it as it is. Maybe move him to there, swap these two over so that he's pushing out into this wide area as well, and Duffy can just sit there. But otherwise, don't fiddle too much, because it, if we had someone sent off in another position, we'd probably sacrifice one of the wingers and go into this kind of shape anyway. So with it being a winger going off, I don't really feel the need to make any changes anywhere else. It does make the last 30 minutes of this game just a little bit more complicated for us especially as Cordoba continues to tire and we are probably going to have to take him off now, really. And Papa, Papa, Nag Papa Nanagis is the one who can come on for him. Milo is no better than he is at playing. Well, we'll stick them next to each other then. We'll do this. So Duffy can sit there doing that um, and we'll stick him in like that and 
They both want to be ball-winning midfielders. Well, they're not going to be. There you go. They can do that. And we'll make him the more attacking one. Calipitas can sit back a little bit more. In fact, Calipitas can sit in there properly and let Lencina do his thing. Kansarovic can be the whip that side. And we just kind of try and hold on to what we've got. Carnavali can come off and we'll bring Acosta on for him up front who can be up there as the complete forward. And we just try not to concede. I'm almost tempted to drop back to a cautious mentality, but I don't want to invite them on to us too much. It's always what I'm afraid of, but I am I am trying to hold on. Ah, oh, now Milo's injured. And that changes everything again. Because we don't have any more midfielders now. Um I mean Michaelis could go forward, but we I guess we bring on Svoras. This is this is what I'm saying. We don't have the strength in depth that a lot of other clubs have. Which is good long term for the development of our young players. But not ideal right now in a Champions League quarterfinal. When I'm playing some kind of weird mutant formation, we are going to drop back to a cautious mentality. And we're just going to try and hold on. Have we just given away a penalty? The youngsters come on and given away a penalty here, I think, which is very upsetting. I mean, we would have taken 1-1 before this game. Come back to our place with an away goal, knowing that we just have to win on the night. It would be even better if we could save this penalty or maybe have the penalty not given. But as it is, let's, let's just try and hold on and come away with this draw. I might go back to balanced because cautious... And I know it hasn't necessarily directly done it, but we go cautious and immediately we concede a goal. So let's go back to balanced and try and cling on to this scoreline. Ultimately, if you'd have said 2-1 defeat away to Dortmund, I'd have taken that as well. So it's not a disaster if we concede another one, but from a, a position of relative strength, and I know we've had a red card and then lost a key player to injury or two key players to injury. So it hasn't been our night luck-wise, and I think the second leg is next week. So we're going to be without Sanchez will be suspended, potentially without Milo and Cordoba. Dominguez still injured as well, almost certainly. And at least we get Felipao back, but he's not really in a position that is going to help us going forward. Then Cena nearly grabbing a very unlikely late winner. Duffy to Papapanagis, I think is his name. And then Lencina's fouled. And I think that's probably that although I guess we've got the free kick and you never know what might happen from a free kick it's Papa Panagis to take again cross comes in Lencina was there but it's gone behind for a corner and this really is going to be our last chance to come away from Germany with a lead Lencina's going to look for an in-swinger we've got Acosta lurking Sforas is lurking in there as well uh, Michaelis is around Lawson is around there's lots of bodies in there goes to Acosta um, but I think Acosta's actually fouled the Dortmund player there he's got his hands up he's apologising and it's 1-1. One, one. And yeah, it's a good result. In the circumstances, it's a great result. Can't help but think what might have been if this hadn't have happened. And then this hadn't have happened. And then this hadn't have happened. Because we're now without both of them for the return fixture. What was the injury to Dominguez? Dominguez is out for another five weeks. Yeah, broken toes. So he is out for the season. So we've got to do the second leg without Milo, without Cordoba, without Dominguez, without Sanchez. Oh, see, Bosic would be in the team now. Well, because apparently four players unavailable wasn't enough. Lencina also got injured in this subsequent game. We were rotated as well. He only came on with 20 minutes to go. Hold on, let's try and get the right button. And we beat Ike 2-0, second place Ike, comfortably beaten with our rotation side. Uh, but Lencina came on in the 71st minute and got injured in the 85th minute. So he now also misses this game. So a... Uh, mm. Oh, hold on. Just need to change him back to sweeperkeeper because when Tanessi plays, he plays as a normal goalkeeper. So this is this is the team. He's not the team I would expect to be playing in a Champions League quarterfinal, but it's Osman in goal. A back four of Kansarovic, Michaelis, Lawson and Felipao. Uh, Papa, Pan, Papa Panagis at the base of the midfield. We'll never master his name. Papa Panagis. Um, it reminds me of a Manolidis when I had him and couldn't say his name for ages. 
Duffy and Gufas in central midfield. Um, here's your little update on Stavros Gufas most recently. Um, now down to three and a half star potential, but has been playing a little bit this season. He started to play a few games in this run-in. Now we're able to rotate a little bit more, but this is comfortably the biggest game of his career. His Champions League debut, in fact. And then Acosta on the left, Marola on the right, and Carnavali up front. I could swap those two round, which might work better, but Acosta's played there a few times in these rotated games with uh, Vinicius up front and he's been fine. And also Carnavali is our top scorer. Well, second top scorer. Sanchez is our top scorer. Carnavali is our highest scoring striker. So it makes sense to play the highest scoring striker as a striker. If it doesn't work, we'll um, we'll just switch it around and stick Acosta up front and Carnavali can go out onto the wing. We'll monitor that as the game progresses. We are back to a positive mentality today. It's our home leg. We do kind of need to go and win the... Or I, I, in fact, we don't need to win the game. A nil-nil and we're through. But obviously, we don't want to be sat here playing for a nil-nil. We want to try and win the game, especially when we've got quite a uh, watered-down midfield. I don't think we can rely on playing for a draw. We need to try and win the match. That's my that's my logic. Gufas, as you can imagine, nervous. Can we swap him back for Bozic? Or swap him back for Bozic. Swap him for Bozic. They want they want the Greek football. I don't think he ever was a wonder kid. Former five star potential player who, as we got better, lost his five star potential, but still might be a good enough squad player for us for the future. And um, the fact he's not looking utterly out of place in this team today, I guess, is a positive. Um, right, guard against complacency. We're doing all right so far. In fact, what I might do because it hasn't worked up front. We've created nothing. If we swap those two over now. Um, try a Costa up front, Carnavali out on the wing for the second half and see if that gets us more of a breakthrough. But really, it's got to be Dortmund who come at us and try and grab a goal. And when they do, hopefully that's when we can uh, squeeze in behind them. I just asked for creativity and that's apparently pressured the entire team. Well, that seems a little bit silly. Uh, <laughs> what have we got? What have we got as game changers? Nothing really. Um, well, Pepe. Or Benatas, Papoutsis, Alafragis. The, the whole attack just isn't playing well. I'm going to bring on Papoutsis. The, uh, this is the young lad that we, uh, that we stole from Olympiakos. See if he can come on and get the breakthrough. Um, and then we're going to take off Marola. No, we're not going to take off Gufas and bring on Pepe in the middle there. I was going to bring Pepe on out wide, which is where we're using most of the time now, but it probably makes more sense to bring him on for Gufas in there as Gufas was still showing a lot of apprehension and was completely out of his depth. And Pepe has played more games at this kind of level than Gufas has. Oh, no. Oh, and there's the goal that knocks us out because I just don't think we've got anything to get back into this game. We're so very weakened by injuries and suspensions and it's not ideal boys and girls we don't want to see the replay we have gone attacking now we're going to demand more we've got 10 minutes we probably need to get Carnavali back up front so I think what I'm going to do is take off Papa Panagis bring on Alathragis and do this get him up there as well and then swap these two over. He can then be a winger over here. And we just have to hope, I guess, that we've got a goal in us somewhere, somehow. Let's go. Very attacking. Let's demand more again. Right, corner. This could be huge. Papoutsis with the in-swinger. And it was Michaelis, and it's just over. Michaelis, another one of the players who has been chased consistently for several seats well, several windows by Dortmund. Oh, that hurts. We gave it everything. It is a first ever quarterfinal for us. Just the injuries and the suspensions accumulating at the wrong time. We got another nine million pounds just for getting knocked out though, which just getting into these knockout rounds has been worth another twenty close to twenty million pounds for us. That hurts. That does hurt. But it's the best we've ever done. And hopefully, over time, we'll build a little bit more strength in depth, which we don't quite have. 
just yet. Well, tomorrow will either be the Greek Cup final if we get there or transfers. And we try again in the Champions League next year. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.